During the events of the Human Covenant War, many experimental technologies were tested out as humans attempted to combat the alien onslaught and avoid outright extinction. One of the great things about humanity is our ability to innovate and create when our backs are against the wall. Some of these technologies catapulted us forward up the technology tier scale, allowing us to spread faster and further amongst the stars. And finally, we ended the war despite all impossible odds with the Covenant. However, these traits haven't always yielded the best technologies. For instance, the nuclear warhead arguably humanity's most potent and powerful weapon yet, on the backside of history, probably something we should have never created. To quote a famous fictional doctor, you scientists were so concerned with whether you could, you never stopped to think if you should. In this universe, the UNSC has ended the war with the Covenant, but only because the Flood has begun to run amok through the galaxy, decimating Covenant and human forces alike. As humanity is pushed further and further to the brink of decimation, they retreat back to Earth and begin experimenting with their faster-than-light engines to stabilize portals for instant transportation, more than likely trying to utilize quantum mechanics and string theory to completely leave the galaxy, as it seems as there's only a matter of time before our species is overrun. Things are looking promising for a while as the portals begin to become more and more stable. By now though, the flood is basically knocking on the solar system's door. In a last ditch effort to escape, the military scientists open the portal to evacuate the planet, but they realize it hasn't actually opened anywhere in our universe, instead opening the portal to another dimension entirely. At first, a team of ODSTs are quickly sent in to explore and scout this area, and are immediately met with different laws of physics as pieces of rock seem to float in the air. They push forward, remarking how this new universe almost reminds them of what the ancient religions used to refer to as hell. That's when they are spotted. These creatures with glowing eyes towering over even the tallest Spartan begins running at them. Weapons seem almost virtually useless against these aggressors, unless used at point-blank range. Their speed and strength is well beyond any of that the soldiers sent in, and they are are ripped apart like tissue paper. During their retreat through the portal, many of the demons have already backtracked to it and begun pouring out. Demons begin to tear apart the teams of scientists located on the other side of the portal before they are able to successfully shut down the doorway to hell. Humanity realizes it is now being attacked on both sides, and because of this, many ships attempt to flee the area. Unfortunately, they have not left in time. The Flood are here. A ship crash lands on the planet, releasing flood spores and combat forms. A full-scale invasion of Earth takes place from within as well as without. As Earth's population of billions is converted to Flood in a matter of hours, and many more are destroyed by the demons, it appears as though this is it for humanity. But what happens when the demons meet the Flood in open combat? How might it go down? Well, with me today to discuss this idea is Hidden Xperia. So with that scenario set up, let's attempt to determine who would come out on top, the Flood converting the demons, or the demons finally breaking the Flood. Right, so let's very briefly explain the Flood. The core building block of any flood form is the flood supercell, which is transferred via airborne spores, infection forms, and any other form of cell transfer. If this cell gets in your system, it sparks the rapid repurposing of your limbs and organs, as well as necrosis, thus turning you into a combat form, or occasionally, depending on the flood's needs, a carrier form. However, for a host to be infected, they require a nervous system. When infected, not only is the biomass of a host put to use, but so are their memories and knowledge, which is how the Flood are able to use human weaponry, command ships, and interface with technology in general. The Flood use biomass to then create central intelligences that help control the outbreak, making it far more intelligent and deadly. The most basic of these is the Proto-Gravemind, which eventually evolves into a Gravemind with enough biomass. When a Gravemind is created, Flood pure forms can also be created. These forms require no host, and thus allow the Flood to increase almost exponentially in number. Now, there's one very rarely discussed characteristic of the Flood that's going to be crucial for the battle at hand, and that is the fact that they are extremophiles. Now, at no point in Halo's lore is it ever confirmed that the Flood are extremophiles, but after doing quite a bit of research and talking with Roanoke, we concluded that they must be. For those unaware, an extremophile is basically an organism or cell that can survive at more extreme temperatures, normally up to around 122 degrees centigrade. Now, considering that flood biomass is able to withstand both direct exposure to the light from stars, and also the heat from entering a planet's atmosphere, I think it's safe to say that maybe, at least in part, the flood are extremophiles. That said, the Flood are still extremely weak to any temperatures that exceed this limit. Extreme cold and extreme heat are their two biggest counters, aside from, of course, the Halo Rings, due to their rotten, decaying makeup. 
Okay, so now let me pass the mic over to Roanoke to give you all a quick rundown on the Parasite Challenger. The demons of hell are imposing creatures who possess strength well beyond that of any creature known in the Milky Way galaxy, apart from the Doom Slayer that is. Just anecdotally, they could absolutely decimate the Legolo. Just throwing that out there. Anyways, standing at a range from low ranking demons of a little over about 5 feet tall to the titans that tower over skyscrapers, the fact is, is that these creatures are incredibly powerful and have quite a few natural adaptations. Well, natural in the sense that it exists on them because Argent Energy is anything but natural, but we will get to that a little later on. Anyways, these natural adaptations will give them the edge over any would-be attackers. A demon's height and strength give them the ability to rip apart any other animal it comes into contact with, and sometimes even their own if they get in the way. This strength is well pronounced across all forms of demons as they are able to rip through powerful suits, as in like full body suits, like Mjolnir for instance, but obviously the larger the demon, the more power it has. In other universes, the mightiest of armies have fallen to the demonic invasions, and in the Doom universe, humanity Humanity is no different. Quickly, demons spread through the portals, overwhelming all of humanity's defenses. When it comes to the low-ranking demon like your average imp, a group of soldiers might be able to take them down given that they are accurate enough with their shots and have a steady hand, but as you continue up the demonic tier, bullets mean nothing. A Hell Knight, for instance, with its speed and power, would not take enough damage before reaching a group of people and basically pulverizing them into meaty piles. Continue up that ladder and the Baron of Hell could simply charge through any bullets and and explosions annihilating even armored individuals quite easily. And I'm saying armored like tanks. But how is this possible? Surely they are made out of meat, right? Well, they are. But the issue lies in their skin. It has been stated that their skin is actually as strong as steel. While this skin wouldn't completely negate the bullet's impact against them, it would slow it down considerably and in some cases stop it entirely. Any bullets that did make it past the skin might not go deep enough to cause any considerable damage. Thus, the demon continues to fight. The strength coupled with the natural resilience makes demons virtually impossible to fight in open large-scale conflicts as they continue to destroy military defense after military defense. Eventually this leads to a conquering of an area and then it's just a matter of time before the subsequent universe is then taken down. Okay, so in this disturbing scenario, humanity possessed the ability to use Argent Energy to create a portal to hell, and now the Flood have consumed them all, so what happens next? Well, it's actually fairly simple. We can assume that Oni used AIs to aid in their research with the energy and the portal, and thus these AIs would subsequently be given the Logic Plague by the Gravemind, convincing them to join the side of the Flood. When the scientists that were working on the project were infected, all their knowledge would have also been assimilated into the Hive Mind, so the Flood now possess all the necessary tools to open the portal and begin their invasion of hell. But how exactly would this parasitic invasion of the worst place imaginable begin? Upon their first encounter with the Flood, the demons would more than likely die of laughter, as weak infection forms and also puny combat forms come flooding through the portal, the demons would begin to absolutely wreak havoc. Despite their newfound foe showing no fear, demons would simply begin grabbing Flood forms and incapacitating them by tearing them into immobile shreds. While the Flood is still technically living, it's hard to attack an actual demon on a cellular level. But you might be wondering about the Flood supercells in general, there exists a major issue with that, but we will discuss that momentarily. As for their physical form, it simply doesn't matter what they throw at the demons. They would not be able to break them and rout them quite like they do with any other species. Tank forms would be met with Hell Knights and Barons and picked up and just brought back down to their singular arm components and pieces of leg. It doesn't matter. Human combat forms would be ripped apart by the savageries of imps. On top of all this, every demon has the ability to use concussive force and superheated shockwaves as well as literal fireballs. As we all know, fire appears to be a permanent way to put down the Flood. It destroys the DNA of a cell, rendering it useless. The Flood would not retreat and continue to attempt to overwhelm the demons as the bodies stacked higher and higher, with little give on either side. Because of this, the Flood might also be confused as to how to advance on a creature as powerful as the demons. Eventually, however, they would adapt as the Flood are not stupid. While occupying portals, grave mines, and even key mines would begin to form on our side of the portal, and for that, I'm going to throw you back to my boy, Hidden. Thanks, lad. With the Flood having their ass absolutely handed to them initially, they'd try and adapt. The creation of pure forms would be increased exponentially. Tank forms and juggernauts in particular would likely become the soldiers of choice for the Gravemind. The tank's heightened resilience and the juggernaut's immense strength 
would create a much stronger flood invasion force, and the unique leadership abilities of the Juggernaut would make even the simple combat form a much more threatening foe. The invading combat forms would also be armed specifically with weapons that fire armor-piercing rounds, given that the demons have skin as strong as steel. This means that most would be armed with assault rifles, DMRs, magnums, and sniper rifles. Plasma weaponry would also be incredibly useful too, although it's not like the demons aren't used to immense heat. The Flood could also utilise vehicles as well, in particular scorpions, wraiths, and any form of airship would prove useful, especially if under the command of an intelligent AI such as, in this case, Cortana given that Chief never got the chance to go back to High Charity and rescue her. And while we're on the topic of Chief, the entirety of humanity was infected. Chief too. This means that the Flood would have the most lethal Spartan in human history on their side, complete with his Mjolnir armour and all of the advantages that come with it. This new and highly specialised Flood Force would definitely be able to put up a fight against the lower forms of Demon. With combat forms still making up the bulk of the army, their new specific weapon loadouts would allow them to tear through the likes of imps and possess soldiers with ease, and any that got too close would be destroyed by the pure forms. However, despite the overwhelming number of troops and also now vehicles on the side of the Flood, they wouldn't stand a chance against the higher ranking demons. Their strength, resilience, combat efficiency, and more than anything, immense heat and body temperature would prove to be the ultimate challenge to our friendly neighbourhood parasite. In the past, infection forms have proven to be able to penetrate what is essentially titanium. One was able to break through Master Chief's titanium composite undersuit in the library, so technically they'd be able to break the steel-like skin of the demons and infect them. However, despite this being technically possible, the demon's immense internal heat would just destroy the infection form as soon as it came in contact with it. And that isn't the only bad news for the Flood. As Roanoke is about to explain, the demons have far more advantages over them than just that. Despite this technology, it would literally come down to a war of attrition. Demons have quite literally overwhelmed technologically advanced species, completely changing Earth into a demon homeworld quite quickly after overwhelming the native humans in their own universe, at least in the events of Doom Eternal, as well as Doom 2. God rest your soul, Daisy. <laughs> Anyways, but here is a major problem. The Flood are also not being replenished. In typical combat scenarios as an army falls, the Flood simply come in, infect the bodies, and replenish their numbers. But this does not happen against the demonic foe. This is a wrench thrown into the whole Flood strategy. First, when a demon is killed in combat, the body is no longer able to become biomass for the Flood. Upon their expiration, a demon simply burns up. This is due to the internal body temperature being so high that their body turns to ashes. This is brought on by the Argent energy exposure, and the higher the demonic tier, the more Argent energy. So, if the dead are out, what about the living? This is also another issue concerning infection. The Flood would have an extremely difficult time infecting living demons as well. Again, it all goes back to internal body temperatures. So let me set it up this way. Due to the Flood's ability to exist out in space in the direct light of a star or entering a planet's atmosphere without completely dying, it seems to me that Flood cells are extremophiles. Here on Earth, we have extremophile bacteria that lives deep underwater near the ocean vents. The temperature can get up to about 60 degrees Celsius, or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. These cells are able to survive this due to an aggressive system in place that repairs their DNA on a near constant basis. Judging by this, I could see the flood surviving in hell for a while, but it is extremely hot in the plane of hell. But like I said, considering that the flood was surviving in direct sunlight in space without the aid of an atmosphere, those temperatures could exceed 122 degrees Celsius quite simply. However, the internal body temperatures seem to be exceptionally high in demons potentially even higher than what extremophiles can exist in. This rules out a multitude of infection techniques. Flood spores are out simply because of the temperature of hell would cause them to combust when they are in the air. On the other side of the portal, if a demon were to breathe in a spore, their lungs would simply cook it. But I will say this, I believe it's also dependent upon the demon. While all demons seem to have Argent energy at their disposal and the use of fireballs in some form or another, it appears as though Argent energy exposure is a real determining factor when it comes to body temperatures. As 
you move up the demon tier, they all sport more and more energy, which means in theory the flood could potentially infect lower forms of demons with their lower body temperatures seeing as the flood could be extremophiles. I believe it would work within a range for the flood being able to infect the occasional imp or even pinky demon by direct contact with an infection form seeing as the demons do indeed have a nervous system. However, by the time they get up to hell knights, the temps would be much too high for them to infect properly, which this could actually yield a private Jenkins scenario where the flood form just isn't able to take complete control. The temps would be much too high to infect properly and would probably cause the infection form to explode on contact. The flood would also have an extremely difficult time piercing the skin of a demon. However, it would still be possible if not improbable. Last, the flood would still have to contend with the Argent energy in general. Argent energy corrupts anything living slowly at first, but as it takes hold, it is absolute. The flood, upon fighting an extremely powerful foe that they couldn't infect too effectively, would also be contending with an unforeseen force influencing them on a cellular basis. Ultimately, here's how I believe it would go down based upon the demon and flood biology. The flood would come pouring through the portal, eager to add biomass. Upon meeting a creature whose internal body temperature is so high that they could not infect and who is decimating their forces, the flood would simply run out of biomass before too long. Due to the flood's intelligence levels, I believe they would more than likely pull back in a more defensive posture. However, even on the earth side of the portal, the demons are relentless. The flood would still begin to fall, but they would have more technology in our universe at their disposal. They would begin attacking the demons and could in theory keep them contained, but only contained. With their technology, they would maybe quarantine off the entire solar system, but the flood have always seemed a little arrogant, at least in my opinion, due to their godly nature. So odds are they would keep trying to fight. This would more than likely lead to their downfall. Without the ability to effectively attack the demon plane of existence, it really comes down to a numbers game. The demons have converted entire universes and have those at their disposal. And with the portals open, they can continue to come through, bringing the fight to the flood without fear of infection due to their natural temperatures, strength, and rugged bodies. The flood's numbers would be pushed back down further and further until ultimately they would either be brought back down to pre-outbreak levels or annihilated completely. The demons are just too powerful of a foe and with their inability to succumb to infection, they really couldn't be stopped. On top of this, even if the flood launched an attack into hell, they would still have to contend with the corruption's effects of the Argent energy turning the flood forms and corrupting flood goals. This ultimately culminates to the flood finally meeting their match in the bone dry areas of hell. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. Now, if this is even remotely as controversial as the Master Chief versus Doomslayer episode, there will be quite a few comments uh, that are going to be angered by the outcome, so I am ready for your rage. But at any rate, let me just say I love Halo, but Doom is literally just Halo multiplied by 10 in terms of power and ridiculous enemies. Hence why I brought the man himself, Hidden Xperia, to support the idea. So now you know I'm just not fanboying here. Anyhow, thanks for coming to my talk today, Hidden. Always have a good time discussing ideas and hypotheticals with you, my guy. Hey, thank you so much for having me on, my dude. I really appreciate it. I'm just sad that, for once, the Flood have actually lost. I, I never thought I'd see the day. Well, I mean, it's honestly about time because it doesn't seem like anybody could ever stop the Flood. So now that, you know, there's the age-old adage of the uh, enemy of my enemy is my friend. Unfortunately, in this aspect, I'm pretty sure your friend eats you in this scenario. So, but at least the Flood finally got stomped. So, if you would like to support the channel, I will drop my Twitter, Discord, and Patreon links in the description. And speaking of patrons, I would like to thank mine. At the scientist here, we have Arulam Lupe, and then we got Artem Chornage. And who's that? It's not a spoon. Next up, our residents are A. Laurentis, Greater Genes 83, Oz Hickman, and Richard Muhlenberg. With their PhD in genetics, we have Allison Kasparo, Andrew Lawson, Divine Whisper, and Laffy No Skill. Casually holding it down with their masters in biology, we have Adam Hartswick, Brendan Brotherton, Cameron Smith, Edgy McGee, John Russo, Scott Grant, The Ren of Lies, The Otter Man, and Zervalian. And last but not least, with their bachelors in morphological sciences, we have Add to the List, Ahigao Comics, Alex the Gun Guy, Anthony Wolf, Captain Gas Mask, Dustin Ellis, Molten Tarts, Professor Binnups, Riot, and Russell McBride. Thank you guys for your continued support. So I hope you enjoyed Hidden Experience and my collaboration. If you are interested in all things Halo, this man has got the deep lore ready to rock. What's that pebble located on Delta's Halo's backstory? Well, Hidden Experience knows, so go check out his channel. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see y'all in the next one.